Welcome to Digital Asset News, like the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. They have a big amount of bite-sized pieces. Today, we're doing a follow-up of a story that we had covered just a couple of days ago when all the FUD came out of the Bitcoin mining situation as far as Chinese shutting down uh, all the different Bitcoin miners just pulling the plug. So we had a great interview uh, with Ibrahim al Kurd, the CEO of New Mine, which is a Bitcoin mining company. And he really just laid it out and said, look, we're going to see a mass exodus of these Bitcoin miners come out of China into Europe, into North America. And he was uh, one of the first to say that there's a mad rush coming in. And this has been verified by an interview that came out on CNBC TV, where they said that not only are the miners coming out of China, but they are picking North America, and more specifically, the great state of Texas that I live in right now. And in that interview, they had a couple of words with Chad Harris, who is the uh, Windstone CEO, and he makes a very clear point that it's not just the miners, but it's the infrastructure operation that is the most critical for getting these things up and running and moving everything out of China and into states in North America, where we can actually do some great Bitcoin mining and uh, really jumpstart the whole industry, I hope. So we'll take a look at that on top of uh, a ancillary story, which was Greg Abbott. This actually happened a couple of weeks ago. He's the governor of Texas, and he sent out a cryptic message which said that he was going to sign a law which gets into uh, blockchain and crypto technology. And we're gonna take a look at exactly what that law is and how it really relates to what is going on with all the miners coming into Texas. And it's all gonna make sense in a bit. So uh, we'll get into all that, but first I wanna say thank you to the sponsor of today's show, which is Unstoppable Domains. If you don't know, Unstoppable Domains, you can get a domain, uh, .zill, .crypto, .coin, .wallet, .bitcoin, .x, .nft, .dow, and .blockchain. So in the early 90s when everybody was buying up all these uh, domains and then selling for a boatload of money later uh, this is I think one of the new uh, influxes of what is happening so me personally I've already uh, purchased dan teaches dot crypto and I have got I have got like stem cell therapy dot blockchain and things like that uh, but those are the things that you can you can purchase and uh, as far as like the new announcements two things first of all when you have these blockchain domains you can start to build on them and have real websites and uh, the Brave browser and Opera are supporting them without a plugin. So anybody who uses those browsers can go right to your website. Uh, with Chrome and Firefox, they have to download an extension, which is a kind of a bummer. And then lastly, uh, the new announcement is that blockchain.com is now a provider. Uh, so if you have a, uh, a wallet uh, that has like Dan teaches dot crypto, which you can send uh, your Bitcoin to Dan teaches crypto. I don't want your money or I don't want your Bitcoin right now. So uh, you can send it just to that instead of having that really long hash. And now it is supported by all the different wallets at blockchain.com, which has been uh, around since 2011. They even have an exchange. I didn't even know that. So thank you to uh, unstoppable domains. And if you're looking for unstoppable domains for a link to go find them to the, uh, the actual website and not go to the wrong one or get spammed or something like that, in all my videos, uh, in the description of all of them, just scroll to the bottom in the description. It's gonna say Unstoppable Domains, and there's a link, you can go right there, and that is it. So thanks, Unstoppable Domains. Let's get into what's going on for the market. So today, ugh, June 24th, 3 p.m., hey, market's up, really great. I mean, after all that FUD and everything else, I thought we are gonna fall a little bit farther. I actually thought we'd hit 28K, we hit 29.4, but uh, I mean, I'll take it. I'm very happy to be wrong. And we've got 1.4 trillion for our market cap. I will take that any day of the week. We've got uh, Bitcoin uh, stable <laughs> at almost 35,000. Ethereum's gonna break 2,000 pretty soon. Binance coin, everything's up. Uh, we're doing pretty good. 14% for Doge, XRP, watch out, 8%. 6% Polkadot, everything's up. It's a great day, right? It's a great day. I don't need to go into that uh, too much. Let me just take a look here. Projected trading range, this is trade the chain, just so you know. And of course, Another one, Bridge Oracle. So with 90% assurance, it's going to be between negative 97% and plus 132% in the next hour. But look at the middle number. That's what I like to do. 17%, not too bad. 5%, 3%. And that's sentiment analysis. You can find a link to that in the description as well. Anyhow, let's just break into today's top story. I think I knew this was going to be big. As soon as China said, you know what, <clears throat> we're kicking everybody out. We're First of all, we're doing two things. We're going to make sure that all these Bitcoin miners are out of here. We're going to cut the power, which they did. And on uh, June 20th, that's it. 
and they're all moving up. And you see everything on Twitter where you see just these empty rows and rows of Bitcoin miners just gone. And where are they going? They're going to uh, Kazakhstan. They're going to parts of Europe. And a lot of them are coming into uh, uh, North America, more specifically Maryland, uh, Miami, I hear, and Texas. And I had gotten wind of this when we did the interview with Ibrahim uh, Al-Kurd. Thank you, Ibrahim, for coming on. I appreciate you. Uh, he's the CEO of New Mine. And one of, he, one of the things he talked about was infrastructure. They do sell minings or mining rigs, but it was the infrastructure to get things going. And if you've been in business, you know it's not just, it's not so much the product itself. It is getting the overhead, the infrastructure, everything kind of laid out so that you can have a successful business. And that is really what it takes. If you look at a lot of, of the old YouTubers, uh, Mr. Christoph was one of them. He was, uh, he was a Bitcoin miner. And he went through a lot of trials and tribulations of getting it set up just the right way because you have to do it the right way as far as like uh, energy consumption and heat distribution and all those things that uh, he had to figure out. Well, what's great about that is that like like Ibrahim and uh, gentleman we're going to talk to in a bit, uh, they already know exactly what to do and they can set you up with massive infrastructure and warehouses to start Bitcoin mining. So instead of you having to go through the whole thing, they're like, look, this is how it's going to be done. And uh, we're going to get you up as fast as possible. So do you not think that all those miners that are coming over from China are who are probably loaded already just going, you know what, we're losing money every single hour, get us up and running as fast as possible. And uh, uh, <laughs> I will have uh, the CEO talk to you about that. So uh, we'll link that description in the video. But this video right here, when I saw this, I knew we were going to be upon the golden age of Bitcoin mining. We're finally out of China. I'm so glad we're out of that place. And we're going into a, into a place. Look, it's not, like, it's not like North America is like perfect, but uh, I'll take it over a communist regime any day of the week. And especially if we can uh, you know, get it here where we can hopefully have legislation and then we can stop that, that debate about renewable resources and everything else, because you can actually track it here. You know, you can't get a lot of information out of China. Well, you can't hear in, in North America and EU. So this was a little snippet. I'm just going to have you listen to it and tell me what you think in the comments section. This, I think, is pretty great. Meanwhile, has plenty of energy problems, but Bitcoin mining does not seem to be one of them. Kate Rooney is live in Rockdale, Texas to explain. Kate, tell us what you found. I see lots and lots of servers behind you. There's lots of servers. You could probably hear the buzz of these supercomputers here in Rockdale, Texas. They're stacked about 20 feet in the air. And I'm looking down this hallway. It's about four or five football fields long. And some in Texas are worried about what more buildings like this could mean for the Texas energy grid. The miners, though, say that they shouldn't be worried. Energy here in the state is among the cheapest in the country. So first of all, the reason why it's the most it's the cheapest in the country in Texas is because guess what? I'm in El Paso right now. It's 106 degrees. We've got solar panels all over the place. On top of that, we've got wind turbines all over the place as well. We have a ton of renewable resources. So that's why it's so darn cheap. And that's why I never understood why we didn't have more Bitcoin mining operations. And now I get it. So uh, let's continue. Texas operates its own power grid. It's deregulated. But it's proven to be pretty fragile during times of peak demand. The state saw rolling blackouts in the winter. It sees the same thing during heat waves like we're seeing right now. First of all, we had one blackout during a really harsh winter in Texas. It's like one of those 20-year winters. I get it, and it did suck. It was pretty awful, I must admit. So when they start talking about, well, ah, the Bitcoin miners are going to suck up all, all, all the energy, guess what? Uh, they turn off uh, the Bitcoin mining because if... Once you start to get so much demand, it becomes too expensive. So there's a break-even point. They're going to turn everything off. And they actually get uh, um, compensated for actually not running uh, the, the minings or the uh, Bitcoin miners. So let's take a listen. And miners say that they shut down operations in times like that because they buy energy on long-term contracts at a stable price. They can often sell it back into the market when the demand strikes and there's a premium for prices. Since they buy that energy in bulk years ahead of time, they say that they're not competing with Texans at home. So in theory, yes, right? Everybody is using the same. If you're an ERCOT, it's 90% of Texas, 26 million customers, 8 million electric IPs, right? So meters. Everybody's using the same series of power 
Are you competing with us? You're not competing with us. That's pretty much it. I'm going to link that in the uh, description below, but that is pretty much what's going on. We have mining operations here in Texas, which are football fields long. We've also got uh, that are 20 feet high, as was said right there. And when I see something like this, I'm like, well, that makes a ton of sense. I can totally uh, understand that. So what we're going to do is before we talk to Chad, the CEO of, uh, of uh, Winhouse, uh, Bitcoin mining. I want to uh, just make mention of this one, or Winstone, excuse me. I want to make a mention of this. Greg Abbott, uh, he came out just, gosh, when was this? June 4th. So yeah, two or three weeks ago. And I'm not going to play it, but he just says, I just signed into law, this new law for blockchain, because Texas needs to be a part of this emerging industry. And I was like, well, that isn't, I mean, I've heard China say we're going to get into blockchain technology. I didn't really like that. But this just came out a couple, uh, about a week or so after that. And what the bill provides a definition of cryptocurrency in the commercial code and provides basic legal rules for crypto companies. The virtual currency bill is similar to the digital asset bill passed in Wyoming in 2019 that has helped position it as a hub for Bitcoin investors. Uh, Abbott stated this, count me in as a crypto law proposal supporter. It is increasingly being used for transactions and is beginning to go mainstream as an investment. Texas should lead on this like we did with a gold depository. So this is what it really comes down to. Um, well, first of all, welcome to my house. Uh, as you notice, I'm not in the pool room today. It's because uh, construction. So I've got to get those things done. But the thing right here is that I've always said that we need some kind of regulatory clarity. And if you just have somebody just go, look, this is what cryptocurrency is. This is what we can do with it. This is what the bank can do with it. This is how business can, can uh, operate and hold it. And for me personally, I think it's also a, a, a good way to signal to the Bitcoin mining community is like, we're ready for you. We would like to uh, have a ton of more jobs here. We would like to uh, create opportunities and businesses. So that's what Texas is going to do. Come here. And we need some people uh, like Chad Harris to kind of make this actually happen as far as infrastructure. So I'm just going to bring Chad in. He's going to explain to you exactly why uh, infrastructure is really uh, the next big game changer as far as Bitcoin or blockchain, Bitcoin mining, and what it actually means to move people into this industry. So let's jump right in and talk to Chad. All right, everybody. So welcome uh, here in the house. And uh, I brought on uh, Chad Harris. Chad, I want to say thanks for coming on, man. <laughs> I really appreciate it, especially in these tough times. Absolutely. Well, you know, sometimes, hey, when you use Twitter and you reach out, I, what did I do? I sent you my cell phone number, didn't I? Yeah. So yeah, Chad okay. Harris, CEO of, of Winstone. I, I just sent him, uh, I just sent a little post on Twitter. I said, hey, it sure be great if we get Chad in here to like uh, alleviate or answer some questions. And he goes, just give me a call, man. And then uh, here we are <laughs> three hours later and we're doing an interview. That's the power That's of it. the internet. That's so, it. That's it. That's it. So anyhow, so here's the question I have. And it makes, it, it's starting to make more sense because when we talked to Ibrahim, he kind of alluded to the fact about infrastructure. And I didn't really get it too much when he was talking about the mining operations and, and, and uh, Chinese miners coming over. And then when I saw that interview where I talked about you have an infrastructure or a warehouse or warehouses where you have 20 feet high of Bitcoin miners that are like four or five, six different football fields long. How do you do that? How do you get all these people who are coming over from China or wherever else they're coming from and be able to accommodate them to get the Bitcoin miners here, to get the actual infrastructure ready and actually have the Bitcoin network up and running again to where the hash power is what it was at before. How the heck do you do that, Chad? You know, so that's an interesting question, right? And so long, a long time ago, three or four years ago, um, when this started in my office in New yeah. Orleans, Louisiana, a small group of us, uh, we made the choice to be in infrastructure guys. Okay. We thought that in the future, we didn't know when the future was, but we mm -hmm. thought in the future mm -hmm. that that would be the biggest resource that would be the, with the greatest demand. Right. And, and we actually bet it right. So, you know, we started building uh, this particular facility here in Rockdale, Texas, Winstone. We started in January of 2020, okay. right? So Good Bitcoin, you, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Can, you, can, you can go look it up. There were times where I remember, it, you know, four and $5,000. And I was mm -hmm. like, if it could just get to seven, right? Like we would uh -huh. joke, if it just gets to seven. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, we, we built 
um, 100, what was it, 125,000 square feet of building, a 300 megawatt substation with a 750 metered uh, transmission line, and we did it in 183 days. Holy smokes. Now, okay. what's, in, what's important when we showed up here, the particular site uh, was a 100 acre green field. Um, both, you know, at the time, one of our partners, Lyle Terrio, who's the CE, the COO of Windstone, and I, he, we looked at one another. He's like, hey, did, did you know there was a forest here? And I was <laughs> like, I had no idea. Like, I like, it's a long story, but we were actually going somewhere else. And so I was like, I didn't even look at this site, mm -hmm. right? I just, I just needed it. Yeah. And so, you know, kind of what happens is that the, the scale and speed of building these facilities, a lot of people don't understand, like just to get transmission studies are 18 to 24 months at times. True. It's not an easy task. And so you hear a lot of people talking about, oh, they're coming. Oh, you know, the phone calls that I get, literally, I had someone show up on Monday and they were like, um, yeah, we want 200 megawatts. And I'm like, mm, in 2023? I mean, that was my answer in 2023. Yeah. It's because, you know, we're building here currently and we have a lot of capacity that we're building, mm -hmm. but it's for other purposes. And so, you know, and everyone seems that, oh, I can just go to Texas because they have lots of power. And lots of land. And lots of land. And it's not, those two things always don't equal the same thing. That makes right? sense. Right? You have to have transmission studies. Do you have the right components, right? Is it, you know, is it, let's say it's Encore. Does Encore, can they give you the distribution? Can you get a power contract? Uh, yeah. Are you inside a city, outside of a city? I mean, there are so many parts to it that I just don't think people understand what it really takes. And like our buildings are 63,000 square feet. Big time, yeah. They're, they're massive. And so, um, you know, you saw bits and pieces in that CNBC um, video and they are, we, our, our, our shelving is 20 plus feet tall. We build it ourselves, Yeah. right? Like we do all the work ourselves. We have a full entire staff. We have engineers, teams, construction guys. We own cranes. Because we know that in order to do this at scale, it's going to be heck, you have to have all the stuff, right? And so that's where we made that choice a long time ago. And it's people that are trying to figure out how to do it today, they don't realize that it's going to take them two years to pull it off. So, okay. So this, so now this makes sense. So like when I was talking to Ibrahim, I said, shouldn't these, shouldn't these Chinese miners have seen the writing on the wall? and been a little bit more proactive and reactive. He goes, well, they thought that was going to happen, but they, you know, they thought they could handle it. And now I see what's happening. They're coming over here and they're like, oh, well, you can just do it because you know, there's all this land and we hear about all this energy, but you can't. And I you think can. what's, so let me ask you this question. So if you're an independent miner, somebody at your house or in your apartment or something like this, would this be a good time? Because now, because if, 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 if the terra ashes are dropping because all the different miners in China can't mine, wouldn't that the, the, the difficulty uh, drop dramatically to where actually an individual miner could actually be profitable these days as opposed to, you know, six months ago? So, you know, when we talked on the phone and, yeah. and I did say that I'm really an infrastructure guy. Oh, that's right. You're an infrastructure guy. I, I'm, I'm an infrastructure guy, <laughs> but, but I do like, it's simple math, right? Yeah. So the hash rate drops, the difficulty drops, and everybody earns more Bitcoin. Um, the price might not dictate the same um, profit percentage, right. but you end up with more if you held it, right? So I think that's like, the, it's supply and demand. It's, it's exactly why this component works in this business. Yeah, and it makes a lot of sense. So I, I can see that. And then like, I was thinking about like with Amazon, the reason why Amazon dominates is because globally they went around and go, we need warehouses. And it doesn't matter how much it costs, we're going to get those warehouses and we're going to grow. And that's exactly what they did. I think that's what exactly what's going to happen here with Bitcoin mining. If you cannot get the infrastructure right and you can't get the layout and the whole heating component and how, you know, as exactly to, to cut your cost for electricity, you're not going to make it. So now I see the power of having the right infrastructure in place first before going out and doing the rest of it. it you know, it's interesting that you say that is that um, I, I, I want to go back one second to, to there's a there's a touch point that I want to hit is that, you know, one of the big things and, and we do is, you know, we've been called on by like dozens of Chinese miners, yes. you know, guys out of Kazakhstan, you name it. And for Windstone, we have like a real set rules, right? You know, so so as a as a as a U.S. company, one a 
we we ask that anyone that we do business with, obviously we have to know who are the customers, right? So we're like, hey, you know, it needs to be a US entity. We need you to be registered in the state of Texas. You, we, you need to follow, follow all the rules and regulations, right? And so what that does is it quickly helps you understand who your customers and it limits the field that you're gonna work with, right? And right. so like all the people that are real serious and like enterprise type customers come to the top and everyone else that might just be kicking tires you know, moves on down the road. And so then, then you go to the point of the importance of this long-term infrastructure program. Um, I don't know what kind of research you've done in the US, but all any major hosting company is at, doesn't have any capacity. And so everyone is kind of in the same position where they're all trying to build this, the, these facilities. And then you have a problem with commodities right? So steel's up, yeah. copper, oh, yeah, like yeah. all these things are hard to get your hands on lumbers out of this world. Mm -hmm. And so concrete's hard to get. You know, one of the problems that we're struggling with is Tesla's building this facility down the road from us and they put three concrete plants there, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Like three concrete plants to fulfill their order. And so like, you run into all those things and it's happening all, all across America right now. So everyone's struggling. It was the guys that were doing this a couple of years ago that kind of have it in play. And I think that that's what's going to happen is I think there's going to be a 12 to 18 month period where you won't see a lot of capacity come on and then it'll happen. These slick, I just thought of something. It's amazing how with Tesla and Elon, how we, you know, we tweeted and we, and we had this, this negative push. And then all of a sudden he talks about you know, these renewables, we need to really look into renewables. And all of a sudden, you know, it's funny though, that Tesla has this nice little subdivision where they do solar panels. That does, that's right. amazing. <laughs> and then on top of that, they also have a big infrastructure in where? Texas. Right. And they're also involved in Bitcoin. Jeez. One, two, three. I'm not going yeah. to get into, I'm not gonna get into that. And uh, you in the comment section, let me know what you think about that, because that is an interesting prospect, especially with what Chad just talked about. Okay. So, that's interesting. It's all interesting. So here's the ne next two questions I got. How, and, and you talked about these enterprise level people getting in and the rest of them just kind of go out and they, tick, they kick tires. How much of an influx have you had with people as far as interest since early June? Uh, so we'll even, we'll even back up before that, right? right? So there's been an influx for the last six months, mm -hmm. over the last six months, and not just a, from multitudes of people, people that you know, um, you know, typical, typical finance groups that would not typically be in this industry are starting to say, Hey, mm. this is a component that we might be interested in. Okay. And as well as, you know, enterprise type customers that are looking to add this to their balance sheet and they're using it as an investment tool. And, and so as that is increased, you're starting to see, you know, supply and demand, and it goes back to limited capacity. And so you have to try to pick really good customers. Like yeah, it's, it's no yeah. different than, you know, no. it, like it's no different in any business that you're in. You mm -hmm. try to pick the customer that work will work best with your um, culture and our culture, you know, Winston has a really unique culture that, you know, we, we came to a town that, um, you know, it's funny that we found this facility because I read a uh, article in Wired Magazine called hard luck town bet on Bitcoin and lost. Hmm. Literally, that's what drove me here. And we came here and we came every week and for six months until we could, you know, arrange to have this facility start construction. And along the way, we, we recognized that um, it was going to be the people in the community that was going to help us. And so, you know, these rural communities have some of the best workforce in America. They're highly trained, they're skilled, they're dedicated. You can't, you can't, like, I think some of our proudest moments here is we've had employees that have never been able to buy a car before, watch mm -hmm. them buy new cars. Yeah. You know, our, our CTO demanded higher wages and, and, and forced, like, argued with me, like, to the end. And I, and we agree. So, you know, we pay all their health care and all these things. And it's really great. And, and I think that's the part that, that these companies have the opportunity to do is like build real companies that do real things, you know, not just yes. mine Bitcoin. And I think that's, that is a great, you know, America is the greatest place there is the United States. I mean, 
all you have to do is get into the ring and give it everything you have and hopefully you're successful enough and you can move on and help others along the way. And there's so much to pick apart there. It's great that you guys, it's job creation. It's, job creating, creation. That, it's creating that American dream, if you want to say it, if you want to go that far. But it's really just giving people that dignity to get back into the workforce and actually Absolutely. doing what they're, what they're good at, which is hard work and, and making good products. Fantastic. Yep, it is. It's really great. Awesome. All right, man. I, you know what, what I would like to do it's in the future is get you and Ibrahim on uh, just a, a quick little update and see how things are going with, with both of this, but I can see where things are going and for the Chinese people, I'm sorry for them, but the Chinese government is the one that was really just shut everything down. And in my, in honesty, I'm glad they did it. Cause it's all going to come this way. It's either going to come to Kazakhstan, Europe, North America. And I think this is the, one of the it. greatest places they can actually come to. Absolutely. Hey, hey, listen, the next time, if you want to, when you're going from El Paso to Houston, you can always make a quick oh. stop through here. We'd love to show you the place. Yeah, I'm going to stop by. I'm definitely going to stop Absolutely. by. Absolutely. And then Chad, be, okay. And the last thing I always ask is before we take off, any words of wisdom for the, uh, for the investor out there about what's going on in the market? Um, I just say, do your research, mm -hmm. know your investment, and pay close attention. Sounds good. All right, yep. Chad, thanks so much for calling. We appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, let's jump back. Okay, so I wanna say uh, thanks to Chad for stopping by. I really appreciate it. And there was one question that we didn't get to, and we're just uh, gradually talking after the interview. And I said, hey, what's the, Chad, what about this uh, renewable uh, debate as far as like energy sources? And he goes, you know, uh, here in Texas, 90% uh, of all Texans are under ERCOT, which is the Electric Reliability Council of Texas. And uh, if you look at it, uh, the new uh, June spreadsheet, uh, we actually uh, are now at 30% using renewable resources. So uh, whether whenever you turn on your light here in Texas or run Bitcoin mining power plants, 30% uh, of that is coming from renewable source. And I go, do you have any kind of information to back that up? And he goes, yeah, sure. And he shared this uh, website with me and I will share it with you in the comment section. This is the uh, Electrical Reliability Council of Texas. Let me blow this up. 90% uh, of Texas load, more than 26 million customers, 75% uh, of load is competitive choice customers, blah, 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 blah. But this is the big thing uh, right here where it says, this is actually 2020 generating capacity. I'm sure, I think it's actually more now. Uh, if you take a look at uh, natural gas, 53%. Okay. Coal, 14%. All right. See this thing called wind right here? Wind, 23%. And then you also take nuclear, 5%. Solar is two. It's about 30%. So about a third is coming from renewable resources. So when I tweeted it out to the car salesman, because he was so concerned about renewable resources, here you go. And uh, we're probably only going to increase that number because all I see is wind turbines coming up. So look, uh, that is it for today. I wanna say, if you made it this far, thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you learned something and liked it. Also, uh, consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about on this channel are very time sensitive, like we just talked about today. Over at Dan Clips, our second channel, we actually talk about more advancements in crypto and digital assets. Uh, so that is it. And uh, thanks so much. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.